it's almost like the first riff, it's almost like Slipknot a little bit. It's really, to me, really cool to um, mess around with that territory. Uh, I always like a lot of Slipknot stuff and I came up with this riff that kind of sounded like that and it has a really heavy, catchy chorus that I say I, I spiral of the mind and uh, it just kind of repeats that over and over almost like a chanting and then there's a thing that Terry did it's a slow down kind of like when you unplug something from the wall and kind of slows down the, the rotation of the song and just goes into that like a, like a weird effect I love that Terry did that on the song and then comes Mark's solo part on, the, on that song and it's really killer One of the, the, again, the most kind of brutal songs on the album. Uh, the lyrics is completely about this is violence. You know? This is, is as savage as it gets. It's total primal, total primitive savagery. I like the, the foundation of the song. Uh, the, the rhythm of it, again, is a heavy groove. It's what this album is based on was the killer groove and this is violence has that groove which is really great and has a really heavy chorus Secret. kcs which stands for kill cut skull and this one has mitch from napalm death and it was great trading vocals i sing one line mitch sings the next line i sing one line mitch sings the next line I always like Mitch's voice and name on that. He's got this high pitch kind of vocal that is really cool. He's an old friend and it was really cool. It was about time we worked together and yeah, we did. It was a, it's a great song. I, I really like uh, the chorus part when it says, you cut scope your soul, you cut scope your heads. Or there was a part when we were recording together and I saw Mitch doing a vocal tape and I saw his eyeball coming out of his face. It was when you did a scream, it was so intense. Which is with Tony Campos, our bass player that speaks Spanish and sings in Spanish in Asesino. And I started on in Clay when I did the song Plato Plomo. Turned out to be a great song, a lot of people really like it. It's in Portuguese and Spanish, combination in half. And then we decided to do a second part of the Plato Plomo, which is El Comandante. And it's the story of the serial killer from Venezuela, Vargas, which was a cannibal. And he was nicknamed Hannibal Lecter of the Andes. And he killed people and ate them. Used the eyeballs for soup. Just a total crazy guy. And me and Tony read about him on the internet and came up with the lyrics and it was great. The song itself is sound like the sugar a little bit. I think it's very dissonant guitars, it's, it's inspired by Mishu, I listen to a lot of that. It has a killer outro that's three minutes long. The actual song ended up being eight minutes because of that. And it's, the, the outro is a piece that Mark did that sounds like Led Zeppelin. And it's uh, fantastic. So it, was, it was a great, great vibe in the studio recording that. And you're just watching Mark playing those nylon strings, the flamenco stuff. And that's something that I always wanted him to do again. He did it on Prophecy on the song Mars, but we never did it again until now, and it was time to do it again. He did it on the open hand, so I was very happy that we did that outro. The age of the I think the most uh, kind of positive uh, lyric wise of the, the, of the album is kind of spiritual, and it talks about your soul. Uh, being in affliction, and that's why I decided to call soul affliction. It's a combination of words, you know, soul and affliction, soul affliction. I really like the groove of the song, and spe especially the, the last part of the album, you know, the song when it comes out to this kind of breakdown with you. It's kind of death metal, it's really killer. Mark did some killer um, guitar work that he said that for him remember the soundtrack of movies, uh, Star Trek or one of 
some shit like that. It was like really, really bizarre. And so he was like, okay, I'll make you some soundtrack, you talk songs, you know, it's really cool. And he was that on Soul Fliction. And uh, I think it was the perfect song to end the record with, because it ends in a positive note, a spiritual kind of note, more kind of back to Soul Flight 1. I think the lyrics of Soul Fliction can be easily found in. Uh, on Soulfly 1, it's a very kind of similar kind of lyric that I would use on Soulfly 1. So I think that gives the album a great ending, a great closure that throughout the whole Savage journey you end up you know, on a positive spiritual note on Soul Fiction. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's a, I'm very proud of this record. I think it's a, it's a very strong record. I hope that people are going to like it and enjoy it as much as I enjoy making it. Sanctuary!